In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the reasons to give birth without pain reducing medication so that you can have a beautiful birth experience and pave the way for great bonding with your child. I'm gonna be sharing some pros and cons to a med-free birth and give you the tips that you need to give birth naturally. Hey, I'm Annabelle with Parently, helping you give birth naturally. We bring you weekly videos to build your confidence in birth. If you're new here, then consider subscribing and ring the bell so that you stay up to date on our weekly videos. Let's dive in to why give birth without any pain meds. Every woman has a different reason, and her reason is valid. And I want you to know that I'm not making light of this whole give birth naturally thing. I know that birth is a big task. It's hard. I gave birth to my son without any pain medication. It was the most beautiful experience of my life and I want that for you. So I know it's hard, but I know that you can do it and I want you to know that I'm here to support you in any way that I can. Sometimes women talk about natural birth like, I just got up this morning and I decided on brown eyeliner instead of black and I also decided to give birth naturally instead of an epidural. And for a lot of us women that hear that we think, well that's not me and I need to go figure out how I'm going to do this and even if it's important. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. In our society today we have come to know birth as something very abnormal with excruciating pain that necessitates interventions such as epidurals, continuous monitoring of our baby, cervical checks hourly, and assisted delivery with forceps or a vacuum. And we mamas go into birth, especially if we've never done it before, and think, this is scary. This is not a normal thing. Somebody help me. And so I want you to take a step back with me and think of birth differently. Birth is a very normal event. Yes, bad things happen to some women, and that's when it becomes abnormal, and that's when we deal with each issue as it comes with interventions. But birth in and of itself, vaginally, without pain meds, is very normal, and you are extremely capable of doing it. You are instinctively, intuitively able to do it because you were born by the creation of God able to do this. And so I want you to think of it that way. And I want you to think about having that support person by your side, your husband, your doula, coaching you through this process, telling you you can do this, and it is not going to be a suffering event. So let's get into why for your body it is so important to give birth without pain meds. Biologically, giving birth vaginally and without pain meds is best for mom and baby. Now I know that's a very bold statement because when I say that no pain meds vaginally is best, that puts everything else in a subpar category. And it's true, giving birth via C-section is not best for mom and baby. In certain circumstances, it is. But overall, it is not our first line of care. So why is C-section birth not our first line of care for mom and baby? It puts mom and baby both at greater risk for infection, a slower healing process for mom, and interrupted bonding and breastfeeding success for mom and baby. So it is not our first line of care, and we wanna stay away from it except for in emergency situations. Epidurals. Epidurals are not as healthy for mom and baby in the birthing process as a med-free birth. Why? Well, for one, epidurals put mom in bed. The moment that they insert that epidural into your epidural space in your back, they say, don't get out of bed because you are tingling and numb from the abdomen down. So you're in bed, what's wrong with that? Well, for one, your pelvis, when you are in a sitting position, 
has the smallest opening for baby to come down the birth canal and exit. And this might be confusing because it seems like most women give birth in bed, right? At the hospital. And they do, but we know the pelvis and we know how it moves. And when you think about your pelvis in a sitting position, it has the smallest opening for your baby's head to move through. And this is why women that do not have an epidural often are moving around during labor and birth. Some women are squatting during birth or standing up or are on hands and knees because they're listening to their body and they're able to move to where their body says, move your hips so that your baby's head can come down the birth canal and exit and not hit the back of your tailbone and get stuck. And so epidurals put you in bed. Epidurals also disrupt the physiological processes that are happening chemically in your body. I know that was a lot to say, but research shows that when epidurals are placed, they disrupt the chemicals that are helping labor progress. And what we see is that women that get epidurals, their labor slows down and their labor is longer. And we think this is because the epidural disrupts a chemical called oxytocin that is causing contractions to happen. And so women that get epidurals often have to get a medication called Pitocin, which is a chemically made oxytocin, and we give that through IV to help the contraction start up again so that we say, okay, labor, get a move on. So not as healthy for mom and baby. And thirdly, epidurals will increase your risk for C-section. They don't do this directly, but they cause things to happen in labor that cause labor to slow down, and we don't like that in the hospital. We want labor to hurry up and happen and birth to happen, and when it slows down so much, doctors get a little antsy, and they don't like what's showing on the monitor, what the baby's heart rate is doing, and so they take moms to C-section. And so these are three reasons why epidurals are not as healthy for mom and baby in the birthing process. So I'm not here to disrespect or disregard medical interventions such as C-section, epidurals, cervical checks, fetal heart monitoring, etc. These are all interventions that are necessary in certain situations that necessitate them. And your healthcare provider will decide on those. But I'm talking about the very natural birth process for the woman without complications. And I'm here to tell you that amazing things happen in your body when you allow a natural birth process. Things happen that allow you to feel your contractions and move to adjust your hips to allow your baby to move into the right position. Getting out of bed and stretching and concentrating on the contraction, becoming very primal in your actions so that you're not trying to reason or use judgment or try to remember what you were supposed to do in labor, but you listen to your body. You get up and you eat or you hydrate because that's what your body's telling you to do. You're in your home with dark lighting and you have your support person by your side. And then you get to your birth process and you birth your baby and you're holding your baby, bonding skin to skin and you feel elated. You've decreased your risk for hemorrhage and your healing process is faster. And research is showing that the bonding really is a huge part of giving birth naturally. Such a part that we don't wanna take that away by giving women epidurals and taking away the pain. Research shows that because of a natural birth and that heightened oxytocin that didn't just affect the contraction, that affected the way that you thought about your birth process, leads into bonding for the first few weeks, months with your baby, and then you get into the parenting years where you're having to make hard decisions to parent your child and then they become adults and you have this lifelong bonding that research is showing because you bonded at birth and that's just amazing to me that literally the moment that you decided to do the best thing for your body and for your baby will give you the results for a lifetime 
So this hormone that I'm talking about, oxytocin, we want to nurture this hormone during labor as much as we can because the more oxytocin, the faster your labor and the faster you're going to be holding your baby in your arms. So oxytocin in our society is really known more as the love hormone. We think of it as, oh, I just saw someone that I know and I have affection for. Oh man, I feel good. I'm loving on my children. I feel so good and they're happy. I'm having sex with my husband and I feel really good. Oxytocin is the one you can think for that. And then labor happens. And we don't really think of oxytocin in such a good way when it comes to labor because oxytocin being released from your brain in the pituitary gland is traveling in waves down to your uterus and causing contractions, pain for you. And you're thinking, I don't like oxytocin. Why do I want to nurture that hormone during labor? Well, if you don't have contractions, which is causing the uterus to squeeze and come up like a curtain and your baby to deliver, then you're not going to deliver. And so we really do want to nurture this hormone. Let's talk about the pain aspect of it though, because in the beautiful design of the human body, thank you God, oxytocin doesn't just cause pain. I told you it was released from the brain and it does travel down to the uterus in waves, which means that it's going to sometimes be bigger waves and sometimes be smaller waves. So each contraction is going to feel a little bit different. One's gonna be really big and painful and then maybe you'll have your rest on the second one but it's also affecting your brain. Oxytocin, like I told you, was the love hormone, and it does affect our brains. It's the trust that we feel, the bonding that we feel, the connection that we feel with our baby and with the event that's happening. Also, because oxytocin is causing pain, our bodies cope with that, and another hormone is released, endorphins. We love endorphins because endorphins help us cope with pain, but they also decrease our sense of pain. They are literally nature's morphine. And so as oxytocin is being released, our body says, okay, hold on oxytocin. We need to reel it back a little bit and okay, we're gonna feel good. We're gonna be in a little bit of a dreamlike state here. And that's why many women that give birth naturally feel like they kind of had a, out of the world experience. They just felt very like, was that me? I felt so primal. I felt so, I wasn't really thinking or using my judgment, I was just doing. And that is the oxytocin effect. And then oxytocin, as it just builds and builds and builds as we're nurturing it with a quiet room, dim lights, support person by our side, getting up and moving we birth our baby as oxytocin is at its peak. And then we're holding our baby, bonding skin to skin. And we see the pregnant woman, elated, forgetting anything that just happened that had to do with pain. And so excited to have the victory. And that is why a natural birth is so amazing. And it didn't just happen because the woman, the mom, decided it. It was because she had chemical processes going on in her body that truly, biologically, made it an amazing event. I do want to mention augmentation and induction of labor with a medication called Pitocin. We also call it oxytocin or synthetic oxytocin because this medication is made in a pharmacy and it's just like are naturally occurring oxytocin and it is given to a woman into her vein to make labor either start or go faster. And so we think, okay, this Pitocin, just like our naturally occurring oxytocin, same effect. But research actually shows that it will cause contractions, but it will not travel up to our brain and cross a barrier in our brain to give us the same feelings of bonding and trust with our baby. And so Pitocin, given an IV, does not have the same effect on our body and on our thought process and our feelings as our naturally occurring oxytocin does. And so that's something to consider with 
getting Pitocin. It is also a very strong medication that is given by a pump and it just keeps coming at us. It is not like our bodies that give us our oxytocin in waves, some big, some small. It's just pain all the way through, which naturally would lead a lot of women to ask for an epidural. Completely understandable, it's a lot of pain. So that's something to consider when your doctor talks to you about induction or augmentation of your labor with Pitocin. So mama, you have been pregnant these past few months. You're heading into the thought of labor and birth. And pregnancy, just admit it, has not been easy. And this is going to be the height of your journey and it's going to be difficult, but you can do this. You can do this. So let's talk about the pros and cons and some tips for a med-free birth. As we've talked about, the pros being that you can get up and move around and listen to your body and your contractions through the labor process. You get all the oxytocin that your body needs and you can deal with that pain. You're gonna have a faster labor and birth process than if you were to ask for an epidural. And in the end, you are going to have the best bonding that there is with your child. The cons, there's a lot of pain, but like we talked about, you're gonna cope with that pain. And the other thing that I really feel is a huge part of the natural birth process is the fatigue. Labor and birth can be a long process and there's things you're gonna to have to anticipate and adjust, but find times to rest, have a support person there cheering you on, eat, hydrate, and take it a step at a time. Now I'm gonna give you my tips on how you can give birth without any pain reducing medication. First, you have to find your reason. You have to know what you believe, why you wanna give birth naturally. It is going to be the bedrock that you build everything on top of and when times get hard during birth, it's what you are going to look back at and say, that is the reason that I'm sticking to this and I'm not gonna give up. Next, you need to build your birth plan. This is just thoughts that you have on how you want things to go. Do you want to go to the hospital when you are six centimeters? Do you want a gown? Do you want monitors on? Do you want to be able to get out of bed? Do you want delayed cord clamping? These are just ideas and things to ponder. And you need to write those down. Talk about your birth plan with your husband. Talk about your birth plan with your healthcare provider. And talk about it with yourself over and over again so that you know what you want to do. So you need to anticipate everything that can happen that might go against your birth plan and know how you're going to adjust to make informed decisions when things don't go exactly like you want them to. After you make your plan, you need to practice. You need to know how to cope with pain, breathing and relaxation techniques, stretching and opening up your pelvis. And you need to do this with your husband or your doula so that they know what you know and what you're gonna be doing in your birth. You need a support person. You need to plan to have that support person by your side the moment that labor starts and all the way through labor. Having a support person by your side, meaning your husband or a doula or your mom, whoever it might be, will decrease your risk for C-section, decrease your risk for epidural, decrease your risk for augmentation and labor, and will skyrocket your feelings of success after your birth. So having a support person by your side is so important. After you do all these other things, you need to resolve in your mind that you can do this, that nobody's gonna stop you, and that you are capable. So those are my tips on how you can be successful in your natural birth process. Question of the day, what is your reason for wanting to give birth without any pain reducing medication? Let me know in the comment section below. I am so excited to read your responses. If you don't have a reason yet, then let me know what you're thinking, why you might wanna give birth without any pain reducing medication. I'm so excited to hear your thoughts and reasons. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and ring the bell so that you stay up to date on the latest videos. We'll see you next time.